Hey guys, welcome to today's video. It's a little different today. I'm gonna do a Q&A. I have got my coffee. I've got my phone with the questions on it. So you go get yourself something to drink and let's get started. I got some really good questions here. We're gonna start with this one which is favorite clothing brands. I got this a couple times. All right, so I love Nordstrom. I would say Nordstrom is one of my favorite places to shop because you have a variety of price point. You have really good quality. I love the fact that they stand behind their products. So they're my favorite places to shop. So I love a lot of the Nordstrom uh, brands that they carry. Um, my favorite is Reformation. Like if you want dress dreams, Reformation is beautiful. I also love Paige. I just recently bought a dress of Paige and it's just, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And then another thing that surprises me because I never really used to like free people and recently I've seen myself like drawn towards more free people pieces. So I've been really liking free people lately. So those are like a few of my favorite brands that I love. Next vacation planned. So I'm very excited about this. We are going to Mexico in January and we are going to Cancun. I have never been to Mexico. If you guys have any recommendations on what to do in Cancun, we're staying at the Riviera Maya. We are definitely doing um, Chichen Itza and we are also gonna go see the cenotes in Chichen Itza. I think it's in Chichen Itza or it's near Chichen Itza. So yeah, let me know below if you guys have any recommendations on places to eat, um, things to do and see and all that good stuff. All right, next question, where do you get your craftiness from? So this is kind of funny, uh, my siblings are gonna laugh at me about this, but I definitely think I get it from both of my parents. My dad, he has a very angular eye, like he sees things very leveled and precise and he likes things very angled. So I would say I get a little bit of my eye from my dad, but as far as like my craftiness from, I would definitely say it's my mom. She, um, for as long as I can remember, she always had like a craft project going on in her house. Um, she bought, I don't know if you guys remember, like years and years ago, I know it's still around, puff paint. I, that, st that smell of puff paint is so nostalgic for me because my mom used to do like puff paint shirts for us and um, so my mom was always very crafty and creative and um, so I definitely think I got that from her. User friendly sewing machine recommendations. I'm talking mucho basic here. My mom's first sewing machine was super basic. Got the job done. I made some amazing clothes. Halloween costumes with that thing. I had it for nine years. Well, my mom had it, but I used it for nine years before like it died. It was from Walmart. I remember it was a hundred bucks and it had two settings, a straight stitch and a zigzag and you could change the size of it, but that was it. And I'll link it below. Um, I'm sure it's changed in the last 20 years, but I'll link a basic one down below for you. Next question is, I ask with the most gentle heart possible, where are you at in your infertility journey? I try to answer it without taking up too much time. But basically, for those of you who do not know, um, Damien and I, my husband, we got married in 2010 and we've been trying to have kids for nine years now, which is crazy. We got married very young. We were still in school, we were still working. So we um, didn't find out for a few years in the first years of our marriage as to why we couldn't have kids. But um, fast forward in 2015, we found out that I had female factor infertility. I was diagnosed with um, low progesterone, estrogen dominance, and then I, the doctors also thought I had endometriosis. And Damien was also diagnosed with male factor infertility. Um, he has, um, we did like a routine semen analysis and they found out he actually had azoospermia and he also had, um, or he has high FSH. And um, so they diagnosed him between those two things, they diagnosed him with what's called testicular failure. And that was so heartbreaking and um, life-changing to hear that news. Um, so we tried finding out after we were diagnosed with this through um, UC Davis, we tried finding out why uh, we couldn't, all the doctors that we had gone to didn't know why Damien had this. So a few years went by because there was nothing that um, the doctors told us that they could do at that time, we didn't know what to do next. So we took a couple years off of just not doing anything. It was so painful and it hurt so bad that normalcy, just going about our day-to-day -day lives was the best way we could deal with it. So fast forward, we moved from California to Arizona and um, it was in 2019 this year that I said, okay, we have to push through this. We have to figure out what's going on and try to hopefully to try to find answers. 
So we went to Mayo Clinic here in Scottsdale. They ran every test under the sun from his genes to blood work. Um, he still has high FSH. They, uh, we went to see an endocrinologist. We went to see a urologist. Um, they pretty much said the same thing, that there was nothing that they could do for Damien. They did find out he had a microadenoma, which is a small tumor on the pituitary. And they also found out he has a varicocele. But um, because both were so small, they said that just leave him alone and that they weren't causing any issues. They did test the pituitary tumor and they did find out that um, it's not secreting any excessive hormones. So that being said, they kind of told us like there was nothing more that they could do for us and that we were, you know, they were sorry, but unfortunately there was nothing more that they could do. For us, we wanted to, um, if we could not conceive naturally, we wanted to adopt. Before we opened the door of adoption, we wanted to figure out, you know, if there was like a possible way to help Damien and I. Fast forward a few months, one of my good friends introduced me to um, a traditional Chinese medicine doctor and um, that was kind of like my first realization, like, well, maybe Eastern medicine can help us if Western medicine can't. So we went to um, an Eastern medicine doctor and he, there wasn't much more he could do for Damien, but that kind of led me into where we are now. Um, I found a much more invasive um, traditional Chinese medicine doctor. And um, so we actually met with her yesterday. So um, we'll see where that takes us. And I can do like an update for you guys as well once we um, start doing the treatment and see how Damien's body responds to it. But if you can, just keep us in your prayers. That would be amazing. Um, because, you know, we don't know how Damien's body is going to respond. The plan is to try to level out his hormones and, um, and hopefully see that his body responds to that. So please keep us in your prayers. We would really, really appreciate that. Next question, it kind of relates to the last one I just answered. Is there babies in the future and how many would you like to have? Shoot, as many as God gives us. All right, let's see. What kind of dog do you have? Little Anjo, our little puppy, well he's not a puppy, he's three years old. His name is Anjo, he's a Jackapoo. So he is Jack Russell and Toy Poodle and it is honestly the best, he is the best dog ever. He is feisty from the Jackapoo, he is smart from the um, Poodle and I love his playfulness. It comes out like he will be laying down taking a nap and then all of a sudden like the Jack Russell just like snaps and he has to play and he has to get that energy out. Having a dog is so special and he has been the best thing for us. Anjo, everybody wants to know what you are. Do you, do you have anything to tell anybody? Do you have anything to tell your fans? Uh, what's your favorite DIY? So my favorite DIY are the ones that you guys do. So many people said that they did my DIY hair trimming tutorial and that just made me so happy. So those are my favorites, are the ones that you guys tell me that you do. What is your current skincare routine? So I have on my Amazon, I'll link it below. <laughs> so many videos I'll link below. But I have an Amazon favorites video and um, what, part of what I use in the morning and night is the um, gold olive oil. And then um, I also love Drunk Elephant products so much. I use their butter balm cleanser, it's amazing. The gel cleanser is amazing. So I've been using a lot of Drunk Elephant and I wanna get the retinol because um, I've heard really good things about the retinol as well. All right, let's see. Typical meals in a day. Ooh, this is another long one. I was kind of like semi-healthy. Like I would have like one foot in like the health realm and then like the rest of my body was in like eating out all the time, eating whatever I wanted, eating sugar, eating dairy, eating whatever I wanted. And my body did not, I didn't realize how much my body did not like me eating that way until I did the Whole30. And then that kind of helped me reset my eating. And then I did paleo. And I was hardcore paleo for a while. I never in a million years thought I could be paleo, but um, my body responded so well to it. And then I realized that I was really missing eating um, brown rice and regular potatoes. So I started incorporating those in my diet. My body really loved it. And then, um, so I'm kind of like semi paleo, but not really. But I try to eat whole foods. On a day-to-day -day basis, I will eat these paleo pancakes. Um, I'll link them below what they are, but the key to them, have to use an egg. And then I cook it in a little coconut oil and I like, crush a little like Himalayan pink salt on it. And then what I do, you guys, because I'm so extra, I'll sprinkle a little cinnamon on there and then I dice up a pear because I like to eat a lot of seasonal fruit. So pears, oh, they're so good right now. So I like dice up a pear, put that on top, crush a little walnuts. Mm. 
amazing. So I'll do that um, for my breakfast. And I'm one of these people that like, if I love what my food is, I will eat it every single day. So that's what I eat every day pretty much are paleo pancakes. If I don't do paleo pancakes, what I'll do is I will boil two eggs and then I'll slice them in half and I will sprinkle a little everything seasoning on there and I'll do that with like a pear or an apple or some like fresh berries. So that's what I typically eat every day. If I don't eat the pancakes, I'll have the eggs. And then for lunch, I always do a big salad. If I have brown rice from the day before, I'll throw in a scoop of brown rice in there. Always try to do at least a cup of shredded spinach. I don't know why, but spinach tastes so much better to me when it's shredded. So I will like shred up my spinach and then I'll add my protein. I'll either do salmon or we have yellowfin canned tuna that I absolutely love from Costco that's amazing right now or I'll do, we have some chicken, I'll do chicken on top of that. I'm all about the herbs right now, so I will take dill and parsley and mince it all up and put that on top of the salad. There's so many health benefits, you guys, to parsley and to dill. So I started incorporating that in my salad. It tastes so stinking good. I'm like, why have I not done this sooner? And then I also dice a carrot, I'll do bell pepper, I'll do cucumber, I'll do olives, like anything I wanna add to my salad, I do. And then for my dressing, I make my homemade dressing. It's so easy apple cider vinegar, olive oil, salt, pepper, and I do a little more seasoning in there, and then I crush a garlic pod and put it in there. Amazing. So I put that over the salad every day. It's so good. And then for dinner, I will do either a baked potato, brown rice, protein, either salmon, chicken, burger, red meat. Let me know if you guys want to see any videos. I would love to do like a day in the life of what I eat video because my eating has changed so much in the last couple of years since what I used to eat like. So anyway, that's what we eat in a day. All right, decorating tips for an apartment for Christmas. Neutral colors are bright and bold. Ooh, this is a good one. So I think a lot of it depends on what's in your home. If you have a lot going on in your apartment, I would say go more neutral. But if you don't and you've got like a really neutral palette going on in your home, you could do either. I will say, I think investing into neutrals for Christmas is great because you can use them year after year and incorporate them with whatever home style you have. So I would say invest in those um, more timeless neutral pieces. And then if you decide to like add like bold ribbon or bold um, topper or some a few little bold ornaments, like that can make a big difference in your space and you know not be that bad of an investment. Always going with gold and silvers, I feel like you cannot go wrong and you can incorporate them with any bold thing you decide to do next year. All right, you guys, that is it for my q and I feel like I've been talking for like two hours now. This was so much fun to do. I have never done a Q&A before. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, please do so because I make new videos. Like last week I showed you how to alter a cashmere sweater and I've also showed you how to cut your own hair. I've showed you how I do these curls. So if you guys enjoy my videos, subscribe, hit that bell so you're notified every time I make a new video. And I think that's it. You guys have a beautiful weekend and I will see you next week. Bye.